Welcome to the PI show. My name's Harry Nowicki. I'm a lawyer. I'm with a colleague, Tony Carbone. Welcome. Hi, viewers. And Hi, Harry. tonight we've got a special guest. Uh, he's, he's Victoria's leading specialist in victims of crime, Gary Nicholson. Welcome. Welcome. Um, thanks for coming uh, tonight. And we've got uh, a lot to discuss about victims of crime. It's a very interesting area of law, I think. Um, but, Tony, what's in the news? Uh, speaking yeah, of victims no, of crime... Of late, the, uh, one of the biggest stories has been the uh, death of Carl Williams in custody, Harry. And, uh, yeah, he was murdered? He was hit with uh, a bike part. Uh, I don't know how it got in there, but obviously... He was murdered by a fellow prisoner. Yeah, yeah. I think there was two involved. Uh, one that did the, one conducted the assault and someone else was involved, I think. That's my understanding, but it's currently being so, investigated. Uh, there's no doubt there was a crime... And we'll come back so. to, I think... Yeah, well, I uh, certainly think that uh, his family has got a potential claim, uh, but we we'll, can we'll, discuss we'll, that later. Later on, yeah. Well, I guess uh, probably it's a little bit uh, outrageous that in a maximum security uh, jail or maximum security section of the jail, he's being killed. So, but anyway, that's... Um, I think there's a long, a long, long and involved history behind yeah. all of that, uh, Tony. But we'll, I think we'll have to come back... But as, 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 as lawyers, we're looking at the um, issue of uh, uh, victims of crime tonight. And there's a very interesting history about um, the victims of crime. My understanding, uh, and I didn't quite appreciate, the victims of crime legislation first started in the 70s in Victoria. In, in 1972. In fact, uh, it's not, not new crimes legisl victims legislation. It's been around since 1972. It was revamped in 1983 and revamped again in 1996. It was in the, uh, the Kennett era where he decided that he would remove uh, cash payments to people as he didn't think it was of any benefit. And that legislation was inherited by the incoming Labor government. So they ran with that legislation. And then in 2000, they decided that it was appropriate to bring back some cash payments uh, to, to victims. And they legislated to allow cash payments of up to seven and a half thousand for serious injuries, and then in two thousand and seven they amended it again and brought it up to ten thousand. Gary, at the time, the cash payment was pretty big back in the eighties, uh, I think. The very first legislation in seventy two actually uh, provided for benefits up to twenty thousand being paid in cash. So it was, uh, it's, uh, it's gone generous. downhill over thirty years uh, considerably. It, it is, and then I think uh, it remained at twenty thousand until ninety six, and then Mr. Kennett, um, you know, he sort of uh, was very uh, harsh. I think just abolished the, the cash component of all. Well, I think that. he made the comment that there was no point in uh, giving a person money to buy a red coat to go down to Crown Casino and spend well, their money. He used to wear that uh, gold coat. Didn't he? <laughs> yes, he oh, did. Well, he should put it back on again. The Hawks can't win a game. Yeah. But um, so the victims of crime currently is now um, $10,000 for... $10,000 cash for what is effectively pain and suffering, although uh, they, they term, the terminology they use is calling it special financial assistance, as they don't want to give the impression that it's compensation because in many cases it's so inadequate it couldn't be compared to compensation. So why was it brought in in the first place, Gary? What's the purpose behind the... Uh, the, the legislation itself? The purpose behind it is fairly simple. Is that, as you would know, there's many times that you'll see a client who wants to sue someone to recover money for damages suffered, but unfortunately if that person doesn't have any funds, you won't be able to make a recovery. In this situation, the government's made a fund available where people can at least be guaranteed... It's a token amount. A token amount yeah. and an acknowledgement that they've been a victim of crime. Also, uh, it covers, in addition to the um, cash component, if you like, there's provision for um, additional expenses. Additional benefits. There's a package of up to $60,000 in addition to the cash component, and that's benefits for reasonable counselling, reasonable medical expenses a loss of earning component of up to 20000 and in some cases, in exceptional circumstances, additional funding to assist victims return from their injury. Gary, one of the things we haven't touched on yet, who, who's entitled? <laughs> who's, who's entitled, entitled? To claim? There are three categories of victims, but essentially, in order to obtain victims of crime, the crime must happen in Victoria, the crime must be punishable by imprisonment, it must be an act of violence or a threat of violence, 
and you must suffer an injury, either a physical injury or a psychological injury. What's the obvious one, Harry? The, an individual getting injured, I guess. Well, there's a, a, you know, people who are subject to assaults, and assaults can occur, as we've discussed, I think, last week in, in nightclubs where someone just flees the scene of an assault and um, the person, in effect, has got no remedy. Or, exactly, or, and that's yeah, what often. it's designed for. They would be a primary victim. A primary victim. But in that case, Harry, what you'd do is you'd get your Victims of Crime Assistance um, you know, package. package and then try and sue, and if you can, what happens if you do get a result, if you get uh, a settlement? The court would take into account that you've received an amount of cash compensation from Victims of Crime and they would reduce the award by that amount. Or do you get it and you pay it back? What's no, the, no, it's reduced. It's, it's reduced. reduced. Okay. Yeah. So the three categories, you've got the obvious individual gets assaulted. Primary a victim yeah, is the situation victim. that Harry just is spoke it, about. Yeah, just, just the assault. Person in a nightclub who's stabbed or assaulted. A secondary victim is a person who witnesses the crime. In other words, they may be a patron at the nightclub. They see someone assaulted and they suffer a physical or a psychological, psychological. injury as a result of, of that. Uh, also, secondary victims are the parents of infants whose child may have been sexually abused uh, by a scoutmaster or church situation. Uh, when they find out that there's, their child has been the victim of abuse, they often suffer severe psychological injury and uh, they would be then classed as a secondary victim. Secondary victims aren't entitled to recover the oh, cash compensation. Okay. So their, their package is limited to $50,000, again made up of reasonable counselling, reasonable medical, loss of earnings, and loss of earnings situation, uh, when a parent does find out that their child's been a victim of a crime, often the psychological effect might render them unable to work for six or eight or 10 weeks. A period of time. Yeah. And what's that last one? Related, uh, what's the last, related the third, victim? Well, it's, it, my understanding is the victims. Uh, the third sorry, category is, is a related victum, and they're related in the sense of they un that only applies to Fatality. So, okay. in other words, homicide situations, manslaughter, culpable driving, dangerous driving, uh, where the police have laid charges in relation to a, a motor vehicle accident. Uh, they are the related victims. The related victims are the close family members of that family. Okay. Look, we're going to have to go to an ad uh, sponsor's break. So, Gary and Harry, um, we'll tell the viewers to stay tuned and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> Thank you.